<laughs> man, anytime you blow up people, all of a sudden I'm down with that. I like, they blow it up real good. They blow it up real good. Plus, you know me, man. I always appreciate a good dummy. Oh, of course. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They even try to make them look like those two guys. They, they stole those out of a window of the department store. <laughs> they should have those a mannequin. Yeah. Yeah. So, you've been keeping up with this. You know we do a lot of reviews here now. We got retro reviews of some sort. You know, we got the bad movie roasts, which are kind of retro reviews for mm -hmm. bad but fun movies. And then we have the retro reviews that we're starting to do for what else? Retro reviews, movies from back in the day that you might remember. But recently we've had our partnership at Universal Studios where they wanted us to review specifically films that highlight black excellence for Black History Month. And I have to say that we have reviewed some excellent black movies mm -hmm. the last three weeks. It has been a journey of black excellence. Yes, yeah, indeed. When are white people gonna get their money? <laughs> I'm, just white excellence? I'm just waiting. <laughs> One day it'll come to us. It, you will, man. Mm -hmm. You will. They don't thank give you. up the fight. Thank man. you. Thank you. Try. Try not to. But this movie that we're about to review right here, it will be the conclusion of our partnership. And this is one that I didn't think we would be able to review at first, but watching it. Now, this is probably the uh, the most lighthearted movie that we've reviewed. Oh, for sure. For mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. You know, out of all of them. It's a straight up comedy, but it's one that all of you were asking us to do. No, not all of you, but a lot of, of you were asking us to do this before we even started doing these Black History Month reviews. And I'm glad you did because I'm happy to once again get reacquainted with Undercover Brother. He's cool under pressure. But when a dangerous criminal needs to be stopped. Get me undercover, bro. Criminal meaning whitey. Yeah, yeah, the, man, the man, as he's called. The man, the mm -hmm. dangerous white criminal sure. out there. He's the one to call. Welcome to the brother. You're going to have to think and act just like an uptight white man with a country club <laughs> <laughs> Damn, yeah. <laughs> he got it, man. He, <laughs> he got it. Yeah, he knows the moves. It's approved. Man, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Could have fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> he almost looked like Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Stevie Wonder in a damn minute challenge person. <laughs> Anton Jackson. And no, I'm not one of the Jackson vibe. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so there you go, folks. That is Undercover Brother. If you haven't seen it in a while, stick with us. We're going to talk about this. And we're going to get into a lot of things with this, this movie. You know, we like to do deep dives with this. It's not just a review. It's a discussion. So this movie, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, first of all, this movie, uh, it's Black History Month that we're reviewing this for. And we're going to talk about the historic uh, significance of this film, along with a few other things. But just to get started, a little background on, on Undercover Brother. Because if you are as old as uh, Martin and myself, you might have, you might have had a, a, a you might have, you you might have had a run in with Undercover Brother in a different way mm -hmm. in this movie right here. Mm -hmm. But this movie came out, uh, came out what like a, a 2002. 2002. Mm -hmm. I guess that was about when did uh, Austin Powers come out? 1998? Nine, okay, 98. So this is about- 97. <clears throat> 97, okay. So this is five years after Austin Powers came out. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because that was also another spy spoof. Now, this came out five years after that, but this, uh, speaking of Austin Powers, this came out the same year when the third Austin Power movie came mm -hmm. out, which was uh, Goldmember. Where can I find this Goldmember? 1975. <laughs> I am from Harlem. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't give a shit anymore. You know, <laughs> went, went to the well one too many times. Yeah, yeah. I like the first two movies a lot. I, 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 I thought the first one was okay. Mm -hmm. I really liked the second yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Second this one, one I was like, okay, I never like this, this what some dog shit. Was with gold man. Just like normally they have like a bit, but it was just like. Okay, hey, you're not on the microphone. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You might want to put that down. Okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not a mic. Yeah. <laughs> he came he in like. He took over too. <laughs> he should did. 
This is a black movie. <laughs> There's only white, one white man at DT. That's my job, goddammit. <laughs> Let me tell you about gold member. You see, this came out at a time when white people were actually running cinema. <laughs> when we were getting good white cinema. <laughs> yeah, gold member, man. By the time gold member came out in 2002, these these Austin Power moves, they start to wane just a little they bit. They had one out as welcome. They yeah. should did. But the second one was really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. I had fun with the with, with the Austin Power movies. I didn't care for the, the, the third one. But that's why in 2002, when Austin Power started to kind of fall off a little bit, you know, getting an undercover brother, man, that was nice, man. Mm -hmm. That's what, That was a fresh alternative that we had yeah. with that. This, this actually did make history in a way that a lot of people probably don't, still don't realize. Uh, I, you and I might know that, mm -hmm. but the thing with the uh, Undercover Brother that a lot of people don't know is that Undercover Brother was based on a web series, mm -hmm. an animated web series. And that's why I haven't told you the plot to Undercover Brother yet because, you know, I could tell you, but who better to tell you than Undercover Brother himself? He is an undercover super slick hero playing the uptight white collar worker by day and the undercover crime fighting brother by night. You have a, a character in the movie who was actually the original undercover brother. Yeah, the voice. Yeah, the voice, uh, Gary Anthony Williams. And it's funny because if you uh, if you go back and, and watch this, you'll actually hear Gary Anthony Williams do Uncle Ruckus in this. Mm. Like he, you know, uh, one of the characters sounds just like Uncle Ruckus. It's the chief of, oh. uh, of Brotherhood. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Oh, what are we gonna do about this boxer undercover brother? <laughs> you <laughs> <nigga? laughs> yeah, blacks. Yes. What is this? Oh, <laughs> undercover brother, thank God you're on our side. <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely hear Uncle Ruckus in that. Yeah. Uh, now, here's something else that's interesting with this movie, uh, and because. A lot of people know that uh, some of the talent behind the film, you know, the producers and the writers and whatnot, but also one of the writers and producers of the movie was also the creator and produ producer and, uh, and and wrote a lot for the uh, the web series. And that's uh, John Ridley. Yeah, he created the web, web series yeah. and, and wrote those. And then he's credited as one of the writers and the, and the person uh, who provided the story on the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... You don't know who John really is. He's a guy that, well, he's written, he's written a lot of things. Uh, he is currently writing Black Panther. Yeah. Oh, really? The, the nice. comic book. Oh. Yeah, right. but he wrote 12 Years a Slave mm. right here and uh, helped produce that along with a few other things out there. This makes history, I think, in that this was, uh, I think, now I might be wrong, and please correct me if I am, which you will, but I think that this is the probably the most successful animated web series to be a movie. Which other ones became movies? Yeah. There are some, but they, you know, and I'll, I'll mention- Because he, cause I know it was icebox.com that had these yeah. weekly web series, like almost one a day for a while. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this is back in the day, in the 90s and the early 2000s when animated web series were very popular because Flash was making animation easy to produce mm -hmm. and Flash was was also a web tool. So combining those two, you, did, you had a lot of web series. That's probably why this looks, the animation looks so bad. <laughs> yeah. There are uh, there are some uh, web series to become movies. Now, some of them, most of them, probably all of them, except for maybe a couple, went straight to video. And also, most of them were very bad. <laughs> it's Fred. <laughs> I'm going my dog. There's no blood in it. Don't put that back on. Let that head stay off. <laughs> I'll chop my head off. Either one or the other. That's Fred. You ever seen Fred? Yeah, the kids mm -hmm. were really into him until he made that movie. And they were like, this is too, <laughs> yep. too far. Yeah, it was too much. Even the kids were like, God damn, that, that's too much Fred now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Fred was, was given like a limited release in mm -hmm. the theaters, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. All but right. Not very All right. successful. I, I guess I was thinking about those, uh, those icebox.com animated series. Because the other one, I used to love Undercover Brothers, my favorite. My second favorite was Queer Duck. And Showtime turned that into a series for a little while. Okay, so but that wasn't a movie. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think they like they made like a you know a movie, but yeah, but you know as far as being theatrical release, right? right. Oh, three, and, no, yeah, no, 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 theatrical release is full movie. I don't think there's any other out there. So in a way, this has made history by being you know the most successful, uh, uh, you know, compared to what they did on the internet, big budget theatrical released 
film based on a web series. Uh, so what we're going to do here, we're going to talk about with this, as I just mentioned, you know, we're, of course, we're going to uh, we're gonna talk about the film. Do a, you know, a, a, a review within our discussion, but also <clears throat> we're going to talk about the impact of this of this movie right here. I mean, we are doing a retro review for Black History Month, so it must be historical for some reason and it must have left an impact for some reason. Uh, we're going to talk about how this is aged. You know, again, what's working, what's not working. How has how how things changed since this movie? And there are some very interesting things that have gone down and changed over time. And of course, we'll come in with some uh, fun facts, a little trivia here and there. As you heard Eddie Griffin say, a.k.a. undercover brother himself, uh, this is about a black organization called the Brotherhood out to stop the man who's pretty much just spreading racism through ignorance and trying to keep the black culture down. I'm not sure if they uh, if they did this on purpose, but it's a very interesting choice of music that they chose for the opening credits. <laughs> now, it's <laughs> funny they chose that song for a very pro-black movie because that's a song called Pick Up the Pieces by a group called the Average White Bear. <laughs> and they, they, listen, they live up to their name because they look like a bunch of average white dudes. <laughs> yeah. It's funky, man. Yeah, they're all Scottish. <laughs> they're all Scottish, so oh. I don't know if you can get any whiter than that. Yeah. Super white. Yeah. But that, that song played heavier on black radio stations than it did. It sure on, did. On it's got soul, right? Yeah, 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 yeah it's got no. soul test. Oh, it's got a lot of soul. Man, I'm Scottish got soul coming out the asshole. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> and it's even funny when they get to the movie because they play that song as they are talking about black progress. African Americans enter the 70s with newfound hope. <laughs> yep, say it, yep. Say it loud. I'm saying it loud, all right. <laughs> and you looked at that beginning, it's like, all right, that's a weird song to play through that. But man, it does give you a good feeling. You're like, hell yeah, man, we brought some good shit to, to it, it, culture, man. Yeah, I mean, they, they were clearly influenced, but you, you can't deny the power of that song. No, not mm. that song, and just the power of black culture and its influence on pop culture, man. I was like, damn, we, we, man, we, we brought some good shit. And then black culture began to lose its distinctive flavor. <laughs> <laughs> and as the millennium drew to a close, disaster struck. <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, that, that, oh, yeah, that happened that too. Happened too. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, okay. Yeah, don't, don't celebrate too hard. <laughs> Can't win them all. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, what they're, what they're talking about here, it's, it's exaggerated, of course, but I really do like the, the, that beginning right there. I like that beginning because... Um, you know, the movie's already showing itself to be a little smarter than the average spoof. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. it's, it's got something to say. You know, it's, it's smarter than the average parody out there. Because it's speaking some truth. You know, black culture is probably the biggest influence in entertainment. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you're here to talk about this. Oh, okay. Because, I, you know, there, there are things that this movie does. And I do want to sincerely get, like, a white perspective on sure. how you feel about that. I can do that. He's like, I'll be completely honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, listen, I um, I never saw this in the, in the theater, but this film played heavily on rotation on Comedy Central. Mm -hmm. And so I remember watching it there for the first time, like, all the way through, and then just chunks of it for, like, <coughs> years afterwards yeah. until I just stopped having cable. Uh, so it's been quite some time since I've seen it, but I always enjoyed the, the movie. I thought it was funny. It reminded me of the Austin Powers film. Yeah, so yeah. That's why exactly. I liked it. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's almost as if they had the web series. John Ridley was already a successful screenwriter and wanted to get it going. Yeah. And then once Austin Powers was made, he could go like, all right, here's an avenue. Yeah. As, yeah. as long as we can use this mm -hmm. to do this. Yeah. No, nah, very true. Uh, so all this is happening. You know, it's a good intro for the movie, but all this is happening before we even meet the man himself, undercover brother, which they finally do bring it in style. You know, man, I gotta tell you, I remember back in the day when we saw the, the trailer for this. <clears throat> and I know, you know, and I feel bad because we saw Eddie Griffin playing the role, and like, I don't know how this is gonna be, man. And then the moment the movie opened, so I don't know what changed, but the moment the movie opened, I saw him in the opening uh, credits before he even did anything. I'm like, damn, he's perfect. <laughs> I I was kind of the same way because I was just so used to how the character was in the series. I was like, yeah. Eddie Griffin, really? And then, yeah, once he got going, I was like, all right, this works. It's fine. Yeah. I, I'll shut up. It was like, man, he was he was perfect. 
I was I'm, I was upset that he didn't actually have an afro. <laughs> I'm like, man, he's, he looks great in that. Not a lot of people pull out that afro today, but Eddie Griffin was, man. I do like how how black positive this starts, you know. Um, but I can also appreciate how the movie's having fun with stereotypes mm. of all kind. Uh, you know, you got undercover brother rolling up with that afro, driving that caddy with the with a big gulp, big gulp of orange soda, man. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't no thing. Now, see, Chris, this is something you gotta know about us. We love orange soda no, so I know. much that even when we're about to crash, we will protect that soda like it's a baby, like I, it's our child. I watch Keenan Kel. I know about the orange soda. You know soda. about the orange soda? <laughs> <laughs> knows what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> we'll, we'll take a bullet for grape soda. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. No! <laughs> orange soda, close second. Though, yeah. Orange soda's a close yeah, second. No, I, though, I'm, a, I'm aware of that. I like that he had a big goal. Yeah, I understood. I got it. All that sugar. <laughs> it continues to have fun with, uh, with stereotypes, man. Uh, and we introduce those stereotypes after we meet the Brotherhood. Uh, that is the secret black version of MI6 of the CIA or something. Yeah, yeah. And pretty much MI6 since this is a Bond takeoff spoof thing too. Uh, and Brotherhood serves as our only protection against the evil force known as the man. Unbeknownst to Undercover Brother, there was a secret organization dedicated to truth, justice, and the Afro-American way. But do they ever say what that acronym Brotherhood stands for? Uh, <laughs> in the movie, no. <laughs> okay. but, and I'm but, glad but, they didn't because it would be as long as a movie to say that. Yeah, exactly. All them letters right there. I feel like they did say that in the, in the web series. <laughs> but, oh, maybe once. Yeah. yeah. I, you tell you, when I saw how long it was, like, you know what? I don't want to know. Yeah, right, right, right. We'll be here all day <laughs> saying these damn letters over here. So this is where we start to meet the uh, the stereotypes. And the thing with this is that, you know, we, we, we always talk about how stereotypes are lazy writing. I mean, here, I think it's appropriate. And also, you know, it's, uh, it's somewhat true. So at the Brotherhood, we start getting introduced to different brothers, you know, and who all are named after their personality trait. It's like the Smurfs. <laughs> yes. You got That's Brainy great. Brother and, and Crazy Brother mm -hmm. and, and Papa Brother. <laughs> like, there he is right there, Papa Brother. <laughs> but uh, the guy who originally was undercover brother, Gary Anthony Williams, mm -hmm. he, uh, he plays Smart Brother here. We up and ready? Yes, sir. And I've hacked into the bank security system. And your thing is, it's like, we can say this is, this is lazy, but... As black people, we all have made fun of a relative or a friend who's who's smart. Of course. And, and he's, you know, he's corny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that was the thing. It would have been easy to make these these uh, these stereotypes, you know, cartoons. But when each one came on, I'd be like, ah, okay, that's, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah no Either like I've that. been that guy yeah. or I've made fun of that guy. Yeah, oh, I know somebody like that. Okay. I know somebody like that. We've all had a cousin or a friend that we grew up with who was smart. And because he was smart, we called him nerdy and, mm -hmm. and corny. Mm -hmm. And Chances are he was nerdy. Yeah. I, why are you leave me alone, guys? I'm, just, I'm trying to read my comics. I'm doing my homework. Uh, also, again, we 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 know this brother right here. Everybody knows that this is true. Maybe still, uh, y'all, you know, smart brother. Some of y'all denying that. Go ahead, you're lying. But you can't lie about the conspiracy, brother. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Everybody knows. That is talking about the Illuminati. Yeah, especially, especially if they just got out of jail. Especially they got out of jail, yeah. Talking about Illuminati, talking about the government, you know. Mm. Shit, I knew more, I knew more, 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 I knew more conspiracies about Obama from black people <laughs> no. than I did from white people back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I heard everything from. Do, do your research, brother. Don't don't don't. don't, uh, don't listen to what they tell you. I heard that he wasn't really black. To he's a robot and all kind of shit. I heard all that shit from black people. So that's why I said, man, you call it lazy. I call this appropriate. We have conspiracy, brother. Did y'all know that George Washington Carver made the first computer out of a peanut? Hmm? A peanut! Oh, shut up. Get back to work. <laughs> and everybody treats him like, man, shut up. Get your ass off somewhere, man. Go back to work. Go back to sleep. Go home, man. Um, today, that would be called probably woke brother. <laughs> Maybe. Mm. Uh, conscious brothers, uh, but definitely a uh, conspiracy brother. And that is played by, as y'all can hear from the voice, that's played by Dave Chappelle. And I got to say, man, that I am so happy that we get 
I'm so happy to see crackhead Chappelle again, man. Yeah, yeah, skinny good, Chappelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah good, good yeah. Chappelle. Like, like, like he's not actually on crack, but he just looks like it. You know, he's got that skinny body. <laughs> you always talking like this, man. <laughs> you know, today he's got that smoky voice. Right, 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 right. Thanks cigarettes. To, thanks to all the cigarettes. Now he's all swollen. He's out there all mm. smooth now. But back in the day, man, <laughs> I was wild. I was wild. I was crazy, man. <laughs> you always look like this, man. That was prime Chappelle. That was, that was yeah. the man yeah, crack. Yeah. Crackhead Chappelle. I miss him. I yeah, miss man, Crackhead I, I Chappelle. Too, he was killing it in this. He it, was. was. He's so funny. And yeah, just just every time he comes on, you're like, what's he going to say next? And yeah. his delivery just <sighs> like takes every line and pushes it to two levels above. And just his physical acting, too. He was on yeah. the computer. He's always like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like that. It's just something like that. <laughs> Maybe like, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm diving. I'm diving, man. <laughs> uh, Crack Chappelle yeah. is my favorite, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> you know, and it's amazing how far Dave Chappelle has come because, yeah. I mean, he was in everything. Dave Chappelle worked his ass off. Now, he say sure what did. you want to say about him today, but he was in all these movies. He was, you know, in uh, the, the Nutty Professor and mm -hmm. did that, you know, did his own movie, Half Baked. Uh, uh, Half -baked. And everybody thought, like, man, this guy's funny. And we would all hope for him to have the best, but I don't think anybody ever predicted. Well, probably some people did, but none of us ever predicted he would be this until big. he did his show that yeah. everybody was like, whoa. Yeah, I didn't know this guy show. had this in it. That's where he blew up on the yeah. on the Chappelle show. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 this is one of the interesting things where we see how far things have come with mm -hmm. uh, and how things have changed. Yeah, like I, listen, I could have seen Dave Chappelle getting big, yes, but actually physically big, I, know. <laughs> I, know. I never would have thought <laughs> out of this world. <laughs> yeah, no, not a realm being, of possibilities. Him, him being skinny and wiry and and crazy was kind of his brand. Yeah. yeah. The, Nowadays, well. all the mellow and, yeah. and everything. And I'm just like, man, wake up. <laughs> wake up, wake up. Wake up, Dave. Wake up, man, and smoke some more crack. Man. You know, uh, I, I, the setup of the movie is very clever, I thought. Mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty yeah, good, it's man. It's, it's a, in story and in style. What'd you say? No, it's fun. Yeah. No, it is fun. I think it sets up the characters very well. You know, uh, before working with the agency, Undercover Brother, already he was already like a hood hero is what they say mm. the, they actually call him the robin hood of the hood in the movie for his opening <laughs> song um he's got you know he's got spy skills of his own uh <laughs> so at the beginning of the movie he goes to this bank disguised as an old man to help low-income homeowners man he's like erasing their records or something and at that moment the movie's already starting to feel like a takeoff not only of james bond but mission impossible yes. yeah also but the action that we get with this man, they, they captured in the style. This is what I like about this. They they actually capture the style in the in the form of like a, a 70s spy show or a black exploitation movie. Mm -hmm. You know, they have these moments where, like in black, especially in black exploitation movies, like they hit somebody so hard they want to freeze the frame. <laughs> so you see how hard they just got knocked the f out right uh -huh. there. Headquarters. Is there another agent on this case? Hell no! <laughs> <laughs> That's an appropriate answer for a black chief. Hell no! <laughs> and you couldn't have picked a better actor to play the black chief. Yeah, what's that guy's name? Chief McBride, or I don't know, maybe it's Shy McBride. I don't know yeah. How you say it. And he was, uh, I think he got chosen by, uh, was it Malcolm D. Lee, mm -hmm. who directed this, who also directed the recent Space Jam? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, wow. Space Jam, he's, he's Legacy. Spike Lee's what? Cousin? cousin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this guy was also in Roll Bounce. Yeah, he's been in a lot of stuff. He's, yeah. But this director also did Roll Bounce. Oh, okay. Yeah. In the beginning, they say, look, we're going to take, we're going to ease into it, but the beginning shows you just how silly, potentially, this movie's going to get. <laughs> <laughs> Undercover Brothers Afro is so big that there are moments where they have to, like, put it in CG. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that shit turns... It's, it turns into an animated cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that cartoon yeah, bounce yeah, in it. Yeah, Looks right. good though. <laughs> Squash and stretch. <laughs> Y'all laughing. The Black Chief. That's all he's known as a movie, Chief. Uh, he he was so funny to me, man. Just the the. the the lines that he would say were funny, but I loved him, especially, again, when he's picking on Chappelle, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, <laughs> Chappelle just gets on his nerves. Smart brother, if you so damn smart, 
Won't you explain what the hell just happened? What, 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 what? Did, 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 did. Somebody hear something? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> man, you remind me of somebody's daddy. Somebody. <laughs> did, did, did. What the hell you doing, boy? <laughs> I love, I love, what's his name, Chief McBride? I love this guy. What, 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 what? Did, did, did. If I wanted to hear something stupid, I'd have asked this skinny black ass. In your face, <laughs> skinny black. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> 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 um, so you you know you uh you, you see all the stereotypes that happen here and whatnot. There's a lot of stuff that they do that's spoofing black exploitation with those stereotypes, and you know they, they're doing you know some. I ain't doing the, the deepest writing, but it, I, I will say that while they're doing all that, they they are still paying respect to black exploitation. Yeah, you know they're spoofing it, but they still it's an homage. Yeah, them. no, it is. Oh, that's the other thing. This black chief too, man. <laughs> so he's so stereotypical that there are moments when he just start. Spouting off lot like this, cl these cliche lines mm. that a police chief would yell, mm. even when they don't make any sense. Where the hell have you been? Let me tell you something. They left him by himself. <laughs> Give me one good reason why I shouldn't fire your sorry ass. Because I don't work for you. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> and what's funny about that? I'm like he didn't work for him when, yeah. I, when I saw this. It like, makes sense. <laughs> I don't make sense. But yeah, man, you know, all these cliches in here, but just because it's doing that doesn't mean that it's, you know, when it's spoofing, it's not paying respect to black exploitation. And that's the thing sometimes, man, when you do a parody or, or, or a spoof, you walk in this, this line sometimes mm. of making it, of not punching down on what it is that you're actually spoofing. You know, and, and this is definitely not doing that. And, I, and, and you can tell that they have respect for it because there's just little details that get in here mm -hmm. where they play it straight. And so they have the opening titles where they, you know, that's with the you already saw the, the title of the movie, but they made an opening title for the character. Yeah. And they do it in 70s black exploitation style. And for the most part, you know, there's some funny imagery here and there, but for the most part, they're playing that pretty straight. Here's the plan. He's got to fight the man. Well, Eddie Black Medallion, and it stands for pride. What was wrong with that boy's hair? <laughs> <laughs> that black Eddie Monster shit he got with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even Nathan was like, God, what is wrong with that poor black boy's hair? I thought it was a little girl at first with a, yeah, with a bad too. perm. And it stands for pride. Truth and justice be your guide. Please. Solid. Solid. <laughs> I like that opening, man. Well, it, it, and the thing is, when you talk about it, it, it paying homage to the black exploitation movies, a lot of times the theme song would be a song about the the guy, the person, right. like like mm -hmm. the 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 Mac, mm -hmm. the Superfly, uh, Truck Turner. It's all singing their legend sure. and telling you like, this is the badass dude you yep. about to see. But no, this is uh this is actually doing doing a lot of great things here, man. I thought as far as you know. Spoofing the black exploitation genre. Uh, also, something that's going on with that title, m less than what you're saying, because you're saying all the all these black exploitation movies they had to sing about the dude to tell how badass he was. They also did that in, in a way that's it's just slightly is doing what a James Bond movie does, where they give you an yeah. intro of Bond and they sang his praises mm -hmm. and whatnot. He's the man. <laughs> 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 uh, it's my favorite Bond song. <laughs> yeah, he's the man. Uh, <laughs> But I say that because not only are they setting him up as a black exploitation James Bond, but a uh, funky black exploitation James Bond. But you know they 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 they're doing so down to giving him like Bond like villains, mm. yeah. complete with the man. I love it that the man is a Spectre organization, <laughs> <laughs> right down to having their own island. The man. <laughs> now, I, this is one of the problems I do have with the movie. Uh, I thought Chris Catan. That's Chris Catan as what, Mr. Feather? Feather. Yes, yeah, uh, Feathers. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. even that's a reference because Feather was the villain in Three the Hard Way. Oh, really? Yeah. I did not know that, man. Wow. Way to go, man. But yeah, Feather. But Chris Catan, first of all, they don't do much with the, the whole thing of him with a feather. That's kind of just dropped after a while. And Chris Catan, I thought he was pretty... He was pretty good. You know, he works for the man. He's 
you know, he's uh, he's he's the arch nemesis here of, uh, of 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 undercover brother. And when he started out, I thought he played that, you know, the, the typical, you know, uh, smarmy kind of kind of with a British accent. Mm. <laughs> James Bond villain. I want the White House to stay white. I'll Our friends at Multinational Inc. have been developing a new drug with some very interesting side effects. You know, I thought he was, I thought he started out pretty good, man. <clears throat> I think as the movie goes on, he, you know, the whole act is dropped and that'd be fine if it was done for some effect. Uh, but, you know, he just starts doing Chris Catan. I, I yeah. feel like he's the the thing in this movie that doesn't work. Yeah. He, he, he was yeah. miscast. And yeah, where he goes with it. It's like, man, you're on a different page from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like he has a lot of scenes where he's not interacting with everybody else. That is not, true. Not even mm -hmm. with his bosses. There are just scenes where he's just left to do... Chris Catan. Let's get it drunk up on that fun up on the desk for me. Come on, everybody. You know, this is this is Chris Catan, all right. This is this is not anything else. That's him doing his own thing. Cause you know we got to get it wrong. What am I doing? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you tell us. Mm -hmm. Also at the time. Now, this is 2002. So at the time, the notion of a black president still felt far off. Sure. Uh, it, it, we Now, six years later, who would have known? But it's, at the time, it felt like we, it would be another 50 years before we'd have a black president, if we had one at all. And also, that was something that you only saw in movies. This is six years before Obama. And in this movie, you have Billy Dee Williams, who plays a general. In the movie, he's a strong contender to be the first black president. He is considered the first African-American with a legitimate chance of winning. Wendy? Yeah, he is a strong candidate, Chuck. He's so well-spoken. I've noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a Chris Rock joke. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, and he's, it's refers to Colin Powell, who I imagine right. Billy D. Williams was supposed to be in right, the movie. Right, right, right. And there, there was some talk like, well, if he ran, maybe. Yeah. And it was like, nah. no, no. <laughs> And that's what, yeah, everybody thought like, man, you light skin. Shit, half the people probably think you white anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> they vote for you by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and that way, he does look white. Yeah, I think yeah. he did it on purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I'm about to say here is, is part of the story, but I mean, they did Billy Dee was wrong. <laughs> I, I thought he was hilarious. No, like, no, like it, he really, he, he really dived into yeah, he it. He committed. Man, yeah. it's wrong, but it's funny as hell. It, <laughs> I mean, they turned up, they turned him to some straight up coonery. <laughs> <laughs> but as I said, it's part of the story. He was, well, they, I mean, I'm glad he did it, but damn, man. Because he goes from being so dignified mm -hmm. to coonery, man. Yeah. Charcuterie. <laughs> yeah. So through mind control, the man, as you heard earlier, they, they, they want to keep the White House white. And they cannot have this upstanding black man that everybody trusts, who is not a stereotype, get voted in. So what do they do? Well, they turn him into the biggest black stereotype <laughs> that they can. I am proud to announce that I will be opening a chain of fried chicken restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was cringing, but he has some of the funniest lines in the movie and he has some of the, yeah, during, man during the, his, his fried chicken phase <laughs> during this, this movie he has some of the best delivery on those lines and the african-american community will be particularly disappointed not after they taste the general fried chicken <laughs> 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 what the f <laughs> and man he's had he's having a billy d williams was having a blast uh-huh they must have gave him some good chicken. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's having he no he's having a good time playing this part of the movie. Will there be side dishes? I love that. Will there be side, side dishes? dishes? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a party closed out. Like, oh, what about dessert? <laughs> Will there be side dishes? Sweet potatoes, black eyed peas, hot sauce. <laughs> Man, he's having too good of a time. <laughs> it's an old evil ass laugh. <laughs> Last time I heard him laugh that hard was when he was slinging malt liquor. <laughs> At Colt 45. <laughs> um, they do reference the malt liquor. In he there, does. Oh, that's, see, that's the thing. It keeps getting, man, it gets worse. <laughs> it follows him forever. It gets, <laughs> you, the movie said, man, we already being racist. Let's just go all the way. And for a limited time only, order an eight-piece nappy meal. Nappy meal! <laughs> 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 I like what you said, nappy. Oh, Colonel. 
You can. General. The, I'm general. sorry. General. General's general. coming for the colonel. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, that's part yeah. of the marketing. Got colonel, the general's yeah. coming. And for a limited time only, order an eight-piece nappy meal and get a 32-ounce malt liquor absolutely free. Boy, he put that emphasis on nappy too. <laughs> nappy meal and get a malt liquor. <laughs> that nappy meal sound good. It does sound good. You be buying, yeah, yeah, we be frying, <laughs> Now he hungry, man. <laughs> That's racist. I'd eat it. <laughs> I'd eat the hell out of a nappy meal, man. I feel bad about it, <laughs> but I'd eat. The hell out of it, man. <laughs> I'd feel deliciously bad about it. <laughs> sure. This chicken is the bomb. <laughs> oh. We do chicken right on. Oh, not the cartoon <laughs> blacker face. No. <laughs> and look at him. Look at him on the. <laughs> He don't even have hair like that. He got a big ass afro on the, on the bucket. Right. Well, it's a nappy meal, man. It's a nappy meal. You gotta meal. have it, yeah. <laughs> yeah how many pieces of, of chicken are in that yeah, bucket? That's a lot. God damn. <laughs> that's why he's gonna outsell the colonel. <laughs> I can see it. I can see. I'm not saying that they would be right, but I can see some white people getting offended when watching certain parts of this. Here we go. I can see white people like, now come on, that's a, gosh darn it, that's a knock. We love polka. <laughs> How dare you show that? That's ours. <laughs> You're like, now, god damn it, we ain't that corny, okay? Come on now. <laughs> a little much. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I'll, you know, I can see people. Like, but I get it, right. it's part of the joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna back up what they're doing right here, because I, you know, I wanna hear what you have to yeah, say yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it stop, make it stop! Here we go now. I see white people. It's too much, too much! Caucasian overload! So, you know, I want to get how, because I can see some people watching this and being like, I get it, it's funny, but how do you really feel when you watch something <laughs> you really No, feel? no, I mean, it's supposed to be comedic. I'm not, I'm not offended. I feel like I mean, if anyone's like offended by that, I think that's that's ridiculous. Yeah. If you're, you're looking to be offended at that, that sure. point. I mean, they're, you know, they're, yes, they're they're indulging, but they're also, you know, riffing on stereotypes oh, and, and <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, but yeah, in any case, um, you yeah. know, you know. No, it's it's I you know and I'll, I'll tell you I'm gonna tell you something, man. So you're right. I don't think anybody can really get offended at that because you know yeah the movie's calling out a lot of people and a lot of those people being white people, but the movie really calls the hell out of black people. Hell yeah, it does. I mean, <laughs> half this movie is finger pointing at black people. You, Joe black ass. Yes, I'm talking about you. I mean, and they call our brothers hard on this man. So Undercover Brother, the reason why he's doing this, he's in training because now he has to infiltrate a corporation that's an extension of the man. And so he goes in disguised as a non-threatening black guy that goes by the name of Anton Jackson. Today's my first day at Multinational. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Who let you through the door? <laughs> Jackson, Anton Jackson. And no, not one of the Jackson Five. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> that's the thing they talked about. And sorry to bother you. You have to speak as if you don't have a care in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you that brother does not. <laughs> yeah. So it's when he infiltrates this corporation. Now, here's what they really call brothers out, man. I knew some brothers were sweating when they went to go see this. They call brothers out because uh, when he infiltrates this corporation, that's where he meets Black man's kryptonite. I wanna be <laughs> white women. <laughs> yeah, you can, you, you can get better casting. <laughs> <laughs> shit. I mean, look, brother, I was weak too, man. <laughs> <laughs> Must fight <laughs> white kryptonite. <laughs> oh. oh, that's adorable that you make it seem like it would be a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to. Uh, I didn't say how long it lasted. <laughs> Acting. <laughs> yeah. It was about 30 seconds. Like, oh, well, I tried. <laughs> yes. Uh, and when she meets Undercover Brother, boy, she lays it on thick, too. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Let, let me help you. And let me tell you something, man. That is a trap. That that's that's a that's a a, a a a trap that's always set up by white women, man. Dropping papers, 
If, so if you a black dude and you see a white woman drop her papers just out of, if she all of a sudden just gets clumsy out of nowhere, she's trying to trap your ass. Run, get away. I would have never guessed it, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's how that girl tried to get Idris Elba, man. Yeah, I just, I thought that, that's the first thing I thought when I saw that again. I was like, wait a minute, we just saw this. Yeah, shit, that is that is a white woman trap right there. <laughs> so if you if you around and you see a bitch drop her papers, you better run. <laughs> don't do, just step back don't, and watch it. Yeah, don't do not do not pick up one sheet. Get the hell out of there. And they are not letting black dudes off easy at all, man. Cause they know you getting off on these white girls. <laughs> they say, they know. They, they say, don't don't look at this and act like you above this. You know you be looking at these white girls too. There is good and bad in everyone. <laughs> 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 that cartoon smile. <laughs> you, even, you even heard it be like. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know you busted when you look stupid like that. <laughs> Listen to this brother, man. He actually put the tee hee hee in. <laughs> when that top jaw start hanging out, <laughs> you guilty, man. <laughs> Shit, you lucky you just got tapped. You lucky to get that damn bottle inside your head. It'll come later. <laughs> uh, like I said, man, you know, everybody getting it. Everybody getting it in here, white and black. And the thing is, neither one of us can argue with it because it's all true. All that, I mean, I ain't, I ain't trying to disrespect black women out there at all. Dudes just, dudes just look at anybody. True. Shit, so I'm sorry. There's a fine ass white chick that we gonna look at just like there's a fine ass blue chick right there. <laughs> you know, we gonna look at anybody more like quit a lot. But uh, so they got us, man. You know, movie got us. We can't argue with it. Brothers out there, like if you went to go see Undercover Brother with your white girlfriend, that was probably a very awkward moment watching this movie. But like I said, white people can't get mad either because they hit it. They, well, they nailed it. I didn't think it was true until I met you. Oh. Mm, I made us some sandwiches. Extra mayo for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they exaggerated that shit until I met you. That is the right, right amount. That is the right amount. Yeah. I always looked at it and laughed like, oh, come on. Man. Hey, mayo is, it tastes good. Yeah. And nobody puts that much on <laughs> until I met you. Chris Herman. I saw the movie and I was just like, I mean, I don't see what's so funny. I mean, that's, that's, that's the right amount that you're supposed to put on. You know. In fact, it could use more. And you might have some additional you know, size uh, of it. I I was getting sick watching this part. <laughs> the sound effects of it. <laughs> this this movie created the bias against Mayo. I think I think it started. Here. No, I, no, 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 man. Listen again. It no. proliferated because of this movie. Might have okay. been there, you but it proliferated. I'll give you that yeah. because up to this point, I was like, oh, do people not like Mayo? I don't know. But by the time I was done, I was like, yeah, I can see how it's gross. Right. This movie doesn't make you look like like <laughs> oh, Mayo. Man, when, I, when I saw this movie. Yeah. I saw certain parts, like the scene I'm about to show, I saw it like, yes, that is so true. <laughs> Have a bite of this uh, sandwich. Yes, <laughs> you're going to pass in white America. You are going to have to learn to like mayonnaise. No. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yes. Mm -hmm, you gotta do it. I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I still like the movie. And as you can see, I mean, given what's going on today, you know, the movie, still has a lot of significance because a lot of this movie is about, you know, being proud of black culture, being proud of your history. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this and this came out in 2002, over 20 years ago. So this was very bold for, you know, what it was doing at the time. Sure. You know, this was a very proud black movie that released by Hollywood and was not a struggle movie. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a black <laughs> yeah, movie right. with a black yeah. voice. Yeah, yeah. True. yeah and, um, you know, you, you know, you hardly saw movies like this. It helped that it was a mid-tier or, you know, mid-budget. Mid uh, a comedy, so and I helped, but it was it's a strong black movie, man. This you know un underneath all the comedy. Now I will say that some of that probably gets derailed a little bit because as the movie goes along, the movie gets sillier. Yeah, it, it's a thing with comedy uh, movies is that at some point you have to come back to the plot you set up at first. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of times that just makes things go, all right, well, it's not yeah. as good as it was. Yeah. You, you're trying to move it along, I get it. I would say that as the movie goes along, it gets very silly and it's not as strong as it was when it was had its opening. 
uh, I still like the movie, but and, and even at the, those silly parts, I, I laugh pretty hard. I mean, because some of it is just so absurd and ridiculous. Like this golf chase, this golf cart chase, right? They had a whole golf cart chase, and it's it's stupid because anybody can hop off and run after the cart at any time. And this is straight from Austin Powers, like this kind yeah, of joke. Yeah, this yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, it is. Yeah. But but man, they, the, the way they ended this gag just it made me laugh because I kind of predicted what's going to happen. Sure, yeah. and that made it that it that made it even funnier. Man, anytime you blow up people, all of a sudden I'm down with that. I they blow it up real good. They blow it up real good. Plus, you know me, man. I always appreciate a good dummy. Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> they even try to make them look like those two guys. They, they stole those out of a window of the apartment store. <laughs> yeah. They should have did those mannequins. Yeah. Some gags go on too long. Especially when they're, you know, trying to appeal to the dudes in the crowd. Like the cat fight scene they had in here. You know, now we're getting Looney Tunes with this. Man, I, I've changed in 20 years because when this, I saw this when the movie came out, that scene wasn't long enough. <laughs> and then when yeah. I watched it today, I was like, like, all right, all right, we yeah. can move this along. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's still too short for me. I'm just, <laughs> I mean, for the sake of comedy, it's a little too long, but for Corey Coleman, I'm kind of all right with this. Look at him. You know, some jokes are obvious. I mean, they work, I guess. I mean, if you don't, you know, it works for the theme of the movie. It's just, it was just like, all right, you know, I don't, I don't know how you would have rewrote that, or if you, or if it shouldn't be in the movie at all. But some things are, are very obvious. Like he has an afro, so he uses afro picks as throwing stars. <laughs> some are groaners because the movie just stops to say, ah, see, ah. See, uh, they go through these different clocks. They got oh, okay, Chicago yeah. time, something time, and then colored people time, which is a, a, a thing, a joke within the b black community. Chris said, within the black community, shit. Right. Yeah. That's, a, that's a thing in life. <laughs> hey, uh, honestly, every ethnic group has a version of colored people. Time. Yeah, sure. White people, we arrive way too early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to wait. You know, honestly, it, it, it is a thing. <laughs> that if I'm going to meet my friends and if they are white, I know I got to show up. That's time. right. You know. <laughs> yes. Not a little bit Absolutely. early. So yeah. Like, they're going to be there waiting already. So. Mm -hmm. I, I am, I'm the same way. Some of it's, you know, some of it's so crazy. Like the movie just starts going nuts at the end. Like some of it, it gets so crazy that it doesn't even make any sense. Uh, <laughs> like this part, I mean, it's it's kind of funny because uh, you know the uh, uh, Neil Patrick Harris has been sort of the underdog of this movie the whole time, but his there's a part here in his scene where he just this this thing just gets insane. It doesn't make any sense anymore. I am not a sister. <laughs> <laughs> Run, y'all. <laughs> Standing there. Come on. So all of that right there is funny. It, it makes sense in context, but this is the crazy part right here. You know, do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, watch this. Why is his what, head? What's it green? green? Yeah, why is, his, why, yeah. Is, why is his head full of Nickelodeon green slime or, or guacamole? Like, why is it, yeah, why is it green? Probably for the rating. Is this is this rated R? No, no, no it's, it's not. probably that because if they had just like your head just explodes, you know, oh. blood. I think but then he pulls too much. some dude's vertebrae out. Yeah, of yeah. Eh, you can get past this. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got bloody, bloody hands. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> a, ble a beaten heart, but okay, all right. <laughs> but amidst it all, what keeps the movie? What keeps the movie in the realm of being a you know a, a, a good film is that throughout the movie it will it'll keep dropping smart jokes and smart gags. Mm -hmm. You'll get silly stuff like that, and then they'll do something that's really clever, or pretty and you know a pretty intelligently written joke. Name one thing the Republican Party has done for black people. They were the party of Lincoln. They stood against the tyranny of oppression by leading the call for the Civil War. I named two things lately. <laughs> <laughs> and while this is a pro-black film, I could see not. Not a lot, but I can see some people saying, well, you know, it's kind of anti-white too. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's, it, what, what this is doing is really talking about how racism and ignorance just keeps people apart. 
You know, it's the dumbest and thing. And how goofy it is. And yeah. how goofy it is and how people, you know, if we just get over, you know, all the dumb shit, we'll, we can all be, you know, just w blending together, working together, living together, just, you know, just ignorant ass people that keep us apart. Little by little, we're blending and working and dancing together like the news or Ali McBeal or the people that work at Saturn. Yeah, Gen Z is like, you lost me near the end. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. lost me too. Yeah. <laughs> But that's what, and that's even what the cartoon did. Cartoon was, was saying the same thing. Oh. <laughs> Undercover brother, thank God you're on our side. I look forward to the day when neither blacks nor whites have to go undercover against each other. Well, you can tell that was recorded on a laptop or something. <laughs> <laughs> that audio. But yeah, so it's, it's very true to the, it's very true to the web series when you think about it, when you look at it. So while some things might not work, it is staying true to, to the source. And as I said, you know, this is a, this is a very bold and outspoken movie. And you, you, you wouldn't notice that probably because, uh, because of, of all the comedy and the goofiness that goes on in this film. But for this time, I think it was kind of a little bit ahead of his time. You know, so I, I you know, I would, I would uh, if you haven't seen it, I would recommend very much very much you check it out uh and i do think it's a very good movie for black history month hey and if nothing else uh you can see chris katong get eaten by a shark with <laughs> with uh afro pics with afro pics in his ass <laughs> 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 all right see you later and well, there you go yeah i like it i mean if i would give it a rating i don't know, like a high man neck yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah. I would give it a hot mad name. I remember liking it back in the day a lot. But yeah, you know, I'm being fair. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work all the way through. But I but I would still give it a hot mad name. Yeah. I think it's a perfect rating right there. I, 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 I think the same thing. It's just it it has a brain. And so often mm -hmm. a movie like this doesn't. Yeah, and sure. Then, and then when you go into it, you're like, oh, wait, these are actually funny. And these are great performers. And, uh, and then anytime Dave Chappelle pops up, he totally steals, yeah, steals his it. scenes. There's a lot of this movie that's edited very well. There's a lot of transitions that they know how to they know how to do from scene to scene. They have one I thought was I didn't know what the hell was going on, and when they finally showed what was happening, I was like, "Oh shit, that was clever, man." <laughs> I was like, "What's that ringing?" Man? Yeah, yeah, good. I thought that was really good, man. The way they did that, it was. Uh, it was a uh, uh, sister, wasn't it? Undercut, what, uh, sister girl. Sister, sister girl mm. staring at Snow Bunny, whatever her name is. It's mean mugging her down, and the whole time you hear this fool screaming in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty good, man. So yeah, check it out, man. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot. Of, it's a very fun film. And like I said, I think it's a little bit ahead of its time. Well, everyone, that concludes our retro reviews for Black History Month in our partnership with Universal Studios. Hope you enjoyed the discussion. Hope you enjoyed all the movies that we talked about. And this was a fun way to go out on a high note. Very funny way to go out. And if you want to stay up to date on upcoming movies, go to Universal's emailing list at uphe.com slash moves. 